how much commitment there can be in a relationship where you're carrying on like this. So the relationship is already kind of in suspect. In fact, I, I wonder, Debbie, about you and your past history, that you don't perceive any boundaries and your relationships are so chaotic. What, what, what was your upbringing like? Did you have something happen to you when you were growing up? <laughs> no, actually not at all. Really? Because it, it's, not, it's not entirely normal to be... Uh, Oh, Drew, she's in college, she's hey, got a roommate, look, if, she's got if, a uh, keg where the sink should be, and she's having a good time. Please, you uh, don't know this then, goes on? It, no, I don't. But if, if, it, if, it's, if, the if you're not hurting anybody, if this is something that's important to you, if you don't feel bad about this, I, I can't imagine that you feel good about yourself without having more kinds of involvement in your relationships. But if this is satisfying to you, just make sure you practice Jamie, what, what do you well, think? Well, I don't know. It seems like, you know, she's either experimenting or this is um, maybe the woman for you. <laughs> I don't know. You have to sort of ask yourself how you feel about it. And only you know the answer. I mean, is this more fun than your guy relationship? Then maybe you need to uh, tell him and see how he would uh, react to it. For me, it seems like acting out. If somebody's acting not out. happy, is acting out. Right. And something went on. Well, maybe and she's not, discovering you know, that she's gay. Got, it's, that's, those are very, those are what we call dysfunctional relationships. Right. There's a lot of chaos in Absolutely. there. Absolutely, but what and if Adam she's going into having, something that she realizes she may be a lesbian. She's a lesbian. Absolutely, right? that, that could be a possibility, but it's still there's so much crazy that she needs to focus All on right, a I'm relationship it up. developer. <laughs> right. uh, okay. tell, uh, don't tell the boyfriend about the boys. Uh, Go ahead and tell them about the girls. They will be excited and titillated. And next time you come in, I'll turn a big Roman orgy right there in the dorm room. Yeah. This now is Paul. Paul is 18. Paul, what can we do for you? What? I couldn't hear it. Paul, oh, Paul? say it again. I heard if uh, I freeze up my nuts for sex, it will greatly increase my orgasm. I want to know if this is true. No, not true. Next call. Wait a minute, true. Yeah. That's too weird. That is weird. <laughs> that is too bizarre. Freezing That is too weird. Let's and go I'll on. say, if when you freeze them, you work a uh, popsicle stick into the mix, you have a handy snack, is what you got. <laughs> this now is uh, what the, nuts in the freezer. That fall through. <laughs> this is uh, Carrie. Carrie's 22. Carrie? Carrie. This. Drew, you are on top of your game not today. In, not even close. Carrie, uh -huh. what can we do for you? Uh, yeah, I live with three roommates, and I share a room with one of my roommates, and when his girlfriend comes to visit him and they have sex, she emits a very strong odor, and when they started going out, he was a virgin, and uh, we, we, me and my roommates want to know if we should tell him that this smell isn't like is it right and how would you go about telling him this and if wait, we can cover the odor up it wait does it permeate the apartment oh god it's terrible man it stinks up the whole house all right so uh all right, basically this is uh, like a holiday fogger here this is not <laughs> love making this is a uh, killing ants but there there is something very important actually that we have to address oh there is but, yes uh, i don't think Carrie realizes what are you worried about the plants or what are you worried about <laughs> it's not my girlfriend it's my roommate's girlfriend Right. Didn't and I say that? She, she, she has a tendency to stink up the house, and our roommate knows and our friend knows it when they come over. And we want, to, we want to know if we should tell him that we think there's something wrong and how we should go about telling him this, and if there's a way we can cover this smell up. You, I, I want to know if Chris out there has something to say that uh, might help us out here. Chris? Okay, Carrie Pig Boy. It takes two to tango. And you never know that it could be the smell might be coming from him. How do you know it's the girl? Well, Men have odors, too. Oh, please. I have oh, a, Adam, please. I've, I've been I in your dressing room. All right. Here, I'm gonna stop, we've got to stop all this. Here's the deal. <clears throat> is that those kinds of extraordinary odors are a clear sign of somebody having an infection. And these infections could potentially be serious. Usually they're just vaginal infections. Usually it's these things called there's Gardnerella, Haemophilus, these sorts of things that are pretty easily treatable these days. Uh, something called trichomonas can cause this. These, these could be sexually transmitted. Your boyfriend needs to know that he may be being exposed to something. He needs to take a treatment too. And anyone who smells like that needs to see a doctor. You need to take it from the standpoint that you're concerned about his girlfriend. He needs to take about take the perspective that indeed he too is concerned about her and get her to a doctor because this can be completely cleared up. Okay? Okay. There's no doubt in my mind that's what you're dealing with. I find if you put a fan in the window, oftentimes it will help in this uh, situation. Drew? All right, yeah. That's a temporary relief. Yes, Mr. There, Sensitivity. <laughs> Thank you. This now is uh, Brenda. Brenda's 18. Brenda. Hi. Um, I slept with my sister's boyfriend, and she found out, and now she won't speak to me or accept my apology or anything. Well, what should I do? 
She did what? Not very. Slept with her sister's boyfriend. All right. That's bad news. That's this, bad this news. This is no Brady Bunch episode. No, it's a Savannah, no, Savannah episode. Savannah episode. <laughs> and we will see it unfurl after the break. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you hit me, it, uh, I know, it, it, it hurt, <laughs> but there's also a certain degree of pleasure involved with that, too. You see she how just, you are? She gave me a little like love that. tap on the kneecap there. That. that was not a love tap. I'll <laughs> never wash that knee again. <laughs> not that I washed it in the first place. Right, no. I know. But now I'm going to be extra careful not, not to, to wash. Not to get it wet yet. in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> All right, Brenda. Yeah. What was her question, Drew? Um, I She's... slept with my sister's boyfriend. Oh, yes. Yes, it's horrible. It's despicable. Mm. And I, I feel really awful, and I tried to apologize, and she won't speak to me at all. Mm. You're 18. I, I heard a child, a baby in the background when you uh, before the break. Oh yeah, that's my friend's son. Your friend's son, not you. You're you're you don't have any kids. No, I don't have any kids. What, what was going through your mind when you decided to do this? Well, I had a little alcohol in me, mm. so I'm not saying that's an excuse. Uh, so why'd I, you bring it up? Uh, well, it's because a, I think I think it has a little something to do with it. Well, if it has something to do with it, then take care of that problem, okay? If you're having consequences from your relationship with alcohol, seize No, her. I'm not saying that's a problem. I'm not saying that's a problem. <laughs> All right, listen, Baby, either... this was a problem. <laughs> you yeah, exactly. have a problem no. on your hands. You're either going to use, use alcohol as an excuse or you're not. If you're using it as an excuse, you take care of that problem. Now you've got to deal with your sister. You've had a consequence from being intoxicated. You've, you've threatened a relationship with, it, with your sibling. I mean, it's a terrible thing. But the uh, thing that I don't understand is that she forgives him, but she won't forgive me. Right. This happens uh, quite a bit. That, that's denial, quite honestly. I mean, she shouldn't forgive you, but she shouldn't forgive him either. Oh, right. I mean, Absolutely. And yeah. we get this all the time. Yeah. I mean, definitely the boyfriend should be gone. I mean, the boyfriend's somebody that can be out of her life and should be out of her sister's life. But you've the got The boyfriend slept with, with, yeah, with yeah. his girlfriend's I mean, that, sister. That, right. I mean, how much worse... Mm -hmm. Could the boyfriend possibly be to your sister? At least maybe you take the approach you've, you've pointed out to your sister exactly what a jackass she's going out with. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if she'd be open to that Work right now. Working from I had sex with your boyfriend, I did you a favor. <laughs> Drew, this no, is beautiful. No, no, I'm not saying manipulate it. But it's going to take a long time to heal this relationship. There's a lot of intense feelings between siblings, and this has brought some heavy stuff to the surface. You are going to have to stay with her, stay constantly at her uh, but, but, but give her a little space and let her let her chill out a little give bit a little don't time, ride but on don't, her but don't be resentful at her for anger don't be surprised at her anger just oh, keep, no, I'm not surprised. keep, I, keep I presenting the a, a, a loving caring posture towards her as much as you possibly can no matter what comes back and uh, she will eventually say And down. you have to let her sleep with one of your boyfriends. No. <laughs> yes, really. I, don't that's think so. the, uh, I don't think so either. That's the Indian way, Drew. Really? Yes, you don't know about the uh, uh, Cherokee and the Comanche. Oh, no. uh, yes, it is written. Uh, Chris, who do you have for us? I'm out here in the audience with Howie, and uh, he's got a question for you. Hey, doing, Drew and Adam. Jamie, um, I have a question for you, Drew. Um, every time me and my girlfriend engage in sex, there's no problems. There's no problems until we bring out a condom. And when she plays a condom on me, my penis goes limp within 20, 30 seconds. And it's gotten to the point where we no longer use condoms and no longer an issue. Just from there on out, it's unprotected sex. And I know mm. sooner or later, if I keep this up, it's gonna, I'm going to get ahead of myself. And I'm going to have to face consequences. But I don't know if there's anything I can do to, to right, kind of stay right. erect. How, how long have you guys been together, the two of you? Two and a half years. So you can both be tested for HIV. You can both see a doctor to make sure there's no potential of sexually transmitted disease. Mm. So that issue is taken out. What about her going on the pill, something like that, for contraception? That's been discussed, but her, like her family, they're like real strict and then they're real nosy. They, so they, we've they, been discussing that she's afraid they would find the yeah. pills. Yeah. Well, the best contraception for her probably, if she's a young female non-smoker, would be the pill. It would be the safest thing for you guys. Does she live at home? Yeah. The, the option now is... She so can't work this? I had a meth lab in my room when I was like 17. I, I don't know. I swear to God, I did. What they call your room, the barn? I had a, like a hydroponic uh, pot farm in the closet, a meth lab going in there, is running a brothel oh, uh, upstairs are, in the attic. We I, are so proud of I you, was, Adam. Uh, <laughs> so proud. And cookies and pimps and prostitutes rolling in and out of that place 24-7. It's all clear now. Yeah, all my surprised? questions are answered now. That's I understand right. Please, she can get the pill past them. Well, what I, about I think the female contraceptive? That's, that's right, the point. They were going, and then we were talking about go. this earlier. About that, have you tried that? No, we haven't, we haven't tried it. You, got oh, it. you have to try that. That, that. that may overcome your problem. It may not. 
Well, and I mean, there's also the sponge, too, that you can just yeah. buy at, like, Sponges, are, are they available right now? They go in and out of uh, production. Uh, the sponges are very effective, and I think a good yeah, they have a contraceptive. They, they have a they, new they, ones with the Brillo side, too, in case, uh, <laughs> you know. All right, the sponge is an excellent yeah. contraceptive. It's not, it's not quite as good as a condom used properly, but it's a very good contraceptive. But honestly, the pill is the best thing for her, uh, for both of you, I suspect. So to have another serious conversation about that, okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Brian. Brian is 23. Brian, how can we help? Yeah, uh, I haven't had a girlfriend for about a year, and the main reason for it is I have three female roommates, and I'm pretty good friends with them, so I go out to bars with them all the time. And when I'm at the bars, they always sabotage me whenever I talk to other women. Um, I tried hooking up with one of my roommates, and uh, they wanted no part of it. They said they didn't want to ruin our friendship. So I guess my question is, how can I stop them from doing this and maybe actually bring a, home, a girl home from a bar with me? Well, while you're taking all your roommates out, they're all women. I don't know what other woman's going to want to come up to you and, like, start something yeah, when see, he's surrounded uh, by all these women. Uh, this is... Uh... JT uh, syndrome, the uh, Jack Tripper syndrome from yeah. Three's Company. <laughs> you, you get hooked up with a bunch of great looking broads that you can't nail and you live with them. And right. then they, they tell the landlord you're gay to top things off and he comes around in a bad leisure suit. No. All right, I'm living but in TV how does, fantasy. How does, how does Yo, this is a ridiculous question. Why are you going to the bars with, three, with these girls if they keep sabotaging you? Break away, be a man. Who's wearing the pants? <laughs> Please, I've had enough of this. That's wonderful. How does a woman react to a guy who's in a social environment with women around him? Does well, that make him more attractive or less attractive? I wouldn't even, I wouldn't start there. There's a lot of women that find that a challenge, but I wouldn't. I mean, it's... It would put you off. I would, it would put me off if he's surrounded by all these women, and I would just be like, okay, that's your deal, man. I know the female mind. What, you think it's a challenge now? It's something to like... No, that's well, look, a male thing. You don't want to overdo it. That's you don't want to... Adam fire. always goes back to the animal kingdom. Right. That's you good, see? though. That's so very the basic. The male surrounded by the females. That's uh -huh. right. They oh. know he is the uh, stud yeah. of the... Right. There we go. ...of the herd. <laughs> oh, yeah. He has the biggest horn just or something. Remember, his room was called the barn. Oh, girl, exactly. Right? Nuts said. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Next call. Sean, 25. Sean. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Hey, uh, I have kind of a bizarre question here. Um... I have this close friend of mine named Todd, and uh, he's been burned by chicks many a time. And he kind of got to the point where he was like, you know, screw women, I don't need them, blah, 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 blah. And it cheered him up one night. I took him out, and we rented a porno, you know. And uh, he, uh, while he was there, he met this girl, uh, he got, met this chick, Rebecca. And uh, they've been seeing each other for quite some time and had a really serious relationship. Well, the weird thing is, is that Rebecca's a blow-up doll. And he's kind of withdrawn with it himself and he doesn't have any urges to be with normal women anymore. And it's kind of wigging me out, and I feel kind of responsible for it, that I brought him into that situation while he was, you know, kind of down, and I don't know what to do. Doc? I... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Take it, it away. It, first of all, Sean, it's nothing you have done. If he was going to withdraw, he was going to find some some way of withdrawing from his peers. Thank God it's not a blow-up boy. I mean, uh, I, I, <laughs> and God knows what you'd be using to blow up. Uh, yeah. you know. how, how long has he been withdrawn like this? Uh, it's, it's been a while, I'd say several months. And the thing is, he keeps telling me that, you know, eventually society will accept, you know, people being with things like this, like oh, they did no. with... No, 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 Sean, he, he's, he's disturbed, he's depressed, something is going on Imagine with the utopia uh, society would be, though, <laughs> if this is acceptable behavior. Oh, it's, it's a shame. Uh, I, I don't... What should I tell him? I mean, he keeps telling, you know, I'm the only friend that really knows about it. He doesn't, you know, everyone asks me, well, you know, he's such a nice guy and he's cute. How come he's always single when he's hanging out with us? You know, I can't say, well, you know, he hangs out with his blood doll, Rebecca, you know. Is he otherwise normal? Is he functioning okay? Yeah, yeah. It's not really, it's not overspilling into the rest of his life or anything. Well, I, I imagine it will eventually. <coughs> I mean, if he's, if he's uh, having this kind of a bizarre preoccupation, I, I would confront him about it. That's the best thing you can do. And uh, keep, keep addressing the reality of what it is he's doing and how bizarre it is and how inappropriate it is and uh, see if maybe he's willing to get some help for it at some point. It sounds like somebody that needs to really uh, talk to a therapist. You know, because I'm expecting someday to come on over there and see him like when they're all dressed up talking to her and stuff, you know, candlelight dinner. And, and then you come over a week later, there's a little inflatable kids. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a really good slide. Oh, uh, your call, pal. He needs himself a uh, in, in inflatable therapist. Uh, any yeah. kind of therapist. Right. <laughs> Let's look on the bright side, Drew. He's not uh, populating the world. That's right. With with children he can't support. He's, he's not, not 
not spreading up, disease. He's not acting out violently. Right, yeah, there's exactly. No, there's no uh, rape here. It is unconsensual sex, uh, technically. Does this fall into and, the fetish category? It, it kind of does, it interestingly. Does. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> but we don't have time to go there. <laughs> don't take We need a little polstering on those things, saying, uh, <laughs> slow down, I'm not ready. <laughs> Okay. Uh, take All the right. garbage out and, <laughs> and wash the dishes. <laughs> My last boyfriend was bigger. Okay. <laughs> Uh, not, not, owner, I should not, say. Not all women say that to their boyfriend now. No. That's all I hear. That's draw. all you're used to hearing. <laughs> okay. Settle down, baby. Right, you know then. you want me. Yeah. Oh, Believe me, when these cameras stop, you'll, you'll, now, you'll, you'll drop this facade. You'll be <laughs> all over me, perhaps dry humping the right. Well, uh -huh. we don't know. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, Savannah, Monday nights, 9 o'clock. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Uh, Chris Magaha, come up here and say hi. Chris Magaha. Until next time, I'm Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew. Say mahalo.